guest is in the studio, a medical officer um, uh, with the oncology unit of the International Maritime Hospital, Dr. Anita Usufri. Did I get it right? Indeed. Thank you very much for making time to be with us today. Thank you, sir. So Pink October, yes. talking breast cancer and uh, uh, increasing the awareness. The worry is that we only wait, not you, but mm. we only wait, <laughs> yeah. the world only waits uh, to talk about this in October. So, mm. Yeah, so. yeah. It's actually sad, but um, I also commend the fact that the Pink October has also helped reduce the prevalence of breast cancer. Mm. It's better than none. It could be better, but uh, the fact that now I know a lot of people who actually make time for October mm. to do all the screening that mm. they have to do for mm. breast. So mm. although we are just focusing on pink October, mm. it has also helped. So mm. I will actually commend that. The numbers are rising according yes. to the data we have, especially in Ghana. Yes. And that's worrisome. Yes. What haven't we done? All right. So um, usually when you look at low and middle income countries, mm. which Ghana is part, mm. the issue is the awareness and the access to the whole campaign about mm. breast cancer in other places of the country. Mm. So personally, I've worked in a district hospital before and the awareness of breast cancer currently in Tema here is not the same when I was in the district hospital. There was not even a time I remember someone would just walk to me and say they want their breast checked. I never experienced that. Mm -hmm. The only time someone will walk to me is when they've seen something in the breast and when it has even advanced. So in our setting, in our country, the challenge we have here is a campaign to those who are deprived I'm um, sorry to use that word of, course, of yeah, the, yeah. the campaign yeah. awareness and also the availability of the screening tools. So I'll talk about the screening tools. We have the mammogram, we have the ultrasound. To be honest with you, even in Tema, I can boast of the fact that it's maritime hospital that I know that we have a mammogram. It's, it's not every facility that has the mammogram. Mm. So this is a challenge elsewhere in other places. Mm. Mammogram is for anybody that is 40 year old and above. So I find myself in a district, I'm 40 years, there's no mammogram. The best that can be done for me may be ultrasound, that is if it is available. I think about the fact that I have to get transportation, convey myself to another hospital that mm. has a mammogram. I sit back and I just say, no, I mm. can't go through all that. Let me just sit somewhere. Mm. So this is the challenge that we are having in Ghana and the reason for it increasing every year because of um, the lack of tools to some areas and also the campaign awareness to other areas in the country. I see. So the, the point has to do with we do not have solutions in terms of cure. That has been established. Okay. Right, do we? So um, we actually have people who have survived breast cancer. So I wouldn't say there is no cure, okay. but um, it can be managed the extent that you'll be a, a survivor, mm -hmm. so quote unquote, cancer free. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And this is based on the time you present to the hospital. Fortunately, in the outside world, the Western countries, um, people are really enlightened about these things. So the lamp they see, they quickly get to the hospital. The necessary screening is done. As I mentioned, there's ultrasound. There's mammogram. So the doctor does these things, quickly investigate further, and they treat aggressively. When you come to a part of the world, people mostly come in advanced stages. So now it's making it look like there is no cure, but that's not the case. It's because of the stage at which we get our women presenting to the hospital. You come in, and if it's advanced, so um, first of all, breast cancer has stages. We have the early very localized. We have the locally advanced. So although it's local, it's a little advanced. Then we have those that is metastatic. So the metastatic is the one that has gone to other organs, um, the lungs, the liver, the brain, the spine. So um, if you should come in in the early stage, the localized one, something could be done. There are a lot of options that we, um, we discuss with the women. So um, someone that is very young, um, you are careful based on the presentation time. You can just take out the lamp. Then you conserve the breast for the patient. Then the patient may go through a chemotherapy or a radiotherapy. If it's advanced, we can give you some chemotherapy to shrink the mass. That's the cancer, the, the mass in the breast. Then we continue with the surgery. So the surgery, we have the mastectomy, which we take out the breast completely. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's not something most women 
want to hear. Mm. But it actually has also saved a lot. A lot of the breast cancer survivors actually went through mastectomy. That's the removal of the breast. Mm. And they're actually walking around very fine. Yesterday, I even saw a woman like that. She had her mastectomy in the US. As I said, the advanced countries, you get access to these things quick. She presented early. Then, um, so what happened with her? Let me use that as an example so that people can appreciate what actually happens with the cancer. Okay, go ahead. She does screening every year. Okay. So she went last year. She went in 2019. There was nothing. So she came back to Ghana. Then she goes back again in 2020. Mm -hmm. Then there's a lamp there. So they, when they saw the lamp, mostly when there's a lamp, the doctor will investigate. So based on what the mammogram will say, the mammogram gives us an idea if it's a cancer, or is something benign? Mm. Benign means it's not cancerous. Mm. So if it's suspicious of cancer, mm -hmm. we take some of the tissue that's from the lamp. Then we do uh, what we call pathology. Mm -hmm. So we investigate it under a microscope to see what type of cancer it is. That is if it's cancer. So for her, she went through that. Then they told her it was cancer. Now they gave her options. Then she preferred to take out the whole breast. Mm. In fact, what she told me was she even preferred to take out the other breast that they didn't have anything in it. Because the issue is the fact that you've had a breast cancer before, it can recur. Mm -hmm. It can recur into the other breast or sometimes even the same place. So she didn't want to go through the fear of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a survivor. I'm fine. But my other breast is still hanging in there mm. and something can happen. But unfortunately, I think in the state, cause of insurance issue, they couldn't do the other side for her. So they took out the whole breast. She went through radiotherapy. As I mentioned, this is part of the treatment. Then now to be honest with you, she's fine. She's fine. Yesterday she saw me for a mammogram for the other breasts mm -hmm. and it was also fine so um it can i don't want to say it can be cured but you can get to a stage that you'll be it's a survivor money. exactly a survivor exactly and been exactly, and and exactly. I, of course i've also heard that uh these are these are by way of some misconceptions mm -hmm. where people feel that once you have you you are a survivor mm. it might it will not come back again and that's not true right? that's not true mm -hmm. that's not true as i mentioned to you yeah. um so far as you've had the, uh, the cancer before, mm. you're at, at risk of another cancer yes, happening. Yeah. So mostly that is not true. Mm. Anybody that's a survivor, if it's um, one breast, we advise that you always come for screening mm. every year for the other breast mm. because it can always recur. So that's not true. I see. So largely it's by way of ensuring that um, we, we ensure we go for testing. Yes, please. Are we assured mm. of... The early detection. Mm. Are we really assured? So, so that when I, the more I go for the checks, mm -hmm. it can be detected that this is cancer early as yeah. well. Because yes. this time I'm not leaving the responsibility on the patient. The patient. I'm talking about facilities. All right. Okay. So it's, you are assured of it being detected. But as I said, it's not every facility that has a mammogram. Mm. That's a challenge. Mm. And I'll also entreat my colleague doctors that if you should see someone and you examine the breast and you suspect there's something there, if you don't have the mammogram machine, kindly talk to the patient and refer to where there's a mammogram. Mm -hmm. The issue is, um, after some of the patients have assessed the mammogram, mm. they don't also get someone to interpret it to them. I've actually encountered patients that they've had a mammogram and they went home. So even if there's something there, she has sent it home. Mm -hmm. Now she comes back later and tells you that, Doc, I actually went to a hospital and the mammogram was done. So at the end of the day, it's looking like you, the doctor, you didn't um, take full responsibility of the patient. Mm -hmm. That is actually another challenge. I don't lie to you. Yeah. There are times that patients, we send them for investigation and we don't follow up. So the challenge too is the follow up, which I recommend that we do it because mm -hmm. if there's a um, follow up on every patient that you send for a mammogram mm -hmm. that comes around, mm -hmm. we are assured of the early detection that you are talking about. I see. Yes. So then again is the, the big one where beyond all of this, the responsibility also lies on is the, is, do you think that there should be something? Because I have always asked that if it is very difficult to detect, mm. then it becomes a problem. Mm. So is to say that 
policy wise mm. a lot of these especially mm. public institutions mm. because mm. people are connected to the public institutions because of their uh, yeah. white carbon yes, yes. must get the mammogram yes. right yes, Is that what yes. You're any woman from 40 and above mm. you must get the mammogram so the mammogram can be done once a year the only time the mammogram can be done um, from six months, like interval of six months, mm -hmm. is when you do a first one and it's highly suspicious of something. That's when we we'll let you, we we'll give you a short review. We are not really sure what is there. Is it cancer or is non non cancerous? That's benign. Mm. For that one, we'll give you a short review of six months to repeat the mammogram. But mostly, mammogram is done once a year, and if it comes out fine. There's no need to progress further. Mm. But if you do it and there's something, then we investigate further. So every woman from 40 and above should have a mammogram once a year. I see. Managing it now is to say what? Mm. Trying to keep up some lifestyle that mm. would not uh, contribute to the, the growth of mm. it. Is that it? So for the management, um, usually... Someone coming with breast cancer, you already mm. have it. So we manage in that line, mm. whether it's early, whether it's advanced, whether mm. it's metastatic. Mm. Unfortunately, if you should come and it has spread to other organs, we, we do what we call palliative care. Mm. So palliative care, we are not doing anything aggressive. We are just managing your symptoms. I've actually seen a young lady, 32 years. She saw her cancer early. She had the breast removed. Then it recurred. So this time I went to a it was quite aggressive than before and mm. it went into her spine. So the first mm. day I saw her, she was paraplegic. She couldn't walk. She was in a wheelchair. And um, the relatives thought they could do something. So they sent her abroad, but it was still the same thing. They told her nothing could be done. It's just palliative. So she came back to us in Maritime Hospital. So for her, what we're doing, we're, we're managing the symptoms she came with because um, it's a, met a metastatic cancer. It has spread as far as to the spine. So if she's in pain, you give her something for the pain. If she's vomiting, you give her something for that. But nothing at that stage could be done aggressively. We have people that um, they have gone through all this. They've got their breast removal, their mastectomy, and they are walking around. Mm. So people like that, we advise them on their lifestyle. So we have some risk factors, as I said with breast cancer. We have um, studies have showed a lot of alcohol intake, smoking, mm. your diet, a lot of fat. So we advise them on some of these things mm. that at least you stay away from the alcohol bits. Is it those smoking. who have the condition? Those who have survived. Survived it. Because so far as you've had the cancer, mm -hmm. as I said, you can get it again. Again, yeah. So no now no. we have to go, let you go through that preventive measures. Mm -hmm. That's your lifestyle. Okay. So that's when we talk about the smoking bit, the alcohol, um, try and do some exercise day okay. in, day out. And also, um, if you are gaining weight, try and cut down on the weight because there are lots of studies associating with breast cancer. Okay. So we advise you on these things. And if you should do that, at least, um, you'll be fine. That's a lifestyle bit. Yeah. How about, so you, you're speaking about mm. survivors. Let's yes. now talk about people who, what must we be doing mm. so that we don't even get into that situation at all? All right. Uh, and that sh it should be backed with, if you like, mm. the the data mm. behind the recent mm. hikes in numbers. Mm. Because mm. for me, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. So um, for women, mm -hmm. most of the times, we have women that have high risk for breast cancer. Okay. You can't run away from it. Okay. And we have those that um, is based on your lifestyle and other things. Okay. So for the high risk, um, examples are those that have close relatives, like mm -hmm. their mom, their grandmother, their siblings having breast cancer. So it's more like it's in the family. Mm. Those that's in the family, there's someone who has suffered from male breast cancer. You mm. know men get breast cancer. Yeah, I was yes. just told one, one yes. out of yes. a thousand or yes. so. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm. Yes, we have we actually seen a man in our end um, which we've managed for breast cancer. So, yes, he went through the mastectomy. That's a breast removal mm. and all that. But he came in quite early. So he's fine. Mm. He's fine. So if there's history of male breast cancer in your family, if people are getting the cancer at a younger age in your family, all this means that you are at high risk. So women like that, unfortunately, that risk can't be modified. It is with you. Mm -hmm. It's a family thing. Mm. Now you have to 
check the lifestyle to prevent it from happening. Mm. So the lifestyle is when we talk about those who are fond of taking a lot of contraceptives. Mm. Yes, um, yes, um, there's uh, um, a lot of study about it. So the contraceptives, most of them have estrogen and this estrogen helps the breast cancer cells to multiply. Mm. So if you are exposed to it, you are taking it for about five years or more, you are at risk. So with that family history, we advise you on some of these things. We advise women that they should, they should also try and at least um, give birth early yeah. because full-term pregnancy also pr gives a protection. And the early is that below 45? Yes, please. Okay. Um, in a, in, when, when you read about it, they actually recommend from 35 and below. Some mm. even say 30 and below. At least you should be pregnant around that time. The economic situation, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cool. <laughs> you have to take it buckle, buckle. These days, if you are, <laughs> we understand. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So I agree. We'll, we'll see into I that. We'll I see agree. I that. agree. But most importantly is that those who are chewing contraceptive are Yes. Good. Women, every time you chew, they just take it, blah, it's gone. Please, take your time. Take your time. Yes, yes, I see. So that's if you have a history, yes, yes, family history yes. of that. And those who don't have the history at all, mm. uh, we advise you that if you should get pregnant, at least breastfeed for at least a year. Mm. Because breastfeeding, not the male breastfeeding, baby breastfeeding. Oh, baby sister, breastfeeding. You have to yes. go there, go. No, you know, I have to talk about that mm. because breastfeeding is broad. So your baby breastfeeding for a year and more protects you from that. And also that if you have a baby. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, more. exactly. It because is. now the people say we are working it's career class, women. You know, and and career women. On and on it's not and easy. So one year has yes, to be. Yes, please, yes, please. You have to try. Is it is it the I mean the direct feeding mm. or you can do that in a bottle? Which mm. one are you looking for? All right. So um most of the times the direct feeding helps with the bonding. But there should be breastfeeding. So mostly we go with the direct one. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Direct that one. Could one of yes. But you yes. are not for the man. One. No, no. The man one is just to help your wife. Is to help your wife because I've actually had patients. You know, we see a lot of these cases. Okay. So the man actually, I mean, during their intimate period, okay. was fondling with the breast and felt something funny in the wife's breast. Oh, so okay. they came and it was we investigated further oh, and it was okay. cancer. So that's when the men the men come in. The fact that you can also pick some things okay. as you breastfeed. No, I'm, that's you, what I'm talking okay, about though. Okay, but right. we can leave it at that. Yes, 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 yes. So, but my men are also interested. But I don't know how we'll do it. But <laughs> because a lot of people say today say no, no sucking of breath by. Men will not help. Yeah. Then some people are also encouraging me. So we don't know where we are. So I just ask. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So um sucking of breast doesn't prevent breast cancer. It's the breastfeeding in a baby. Oh, because okay. that has hormonal issues. That mm. helps reduce the breast cancer cells from multiplying. But a man sucking it helps in detecting okay. the lump. Okay. Yes, it right. helps in detecting that. Obviously, you will actually feel that something is not right. No, right. Exactly. So just know the balance. People who are deceiving ladies in town that come and let me help you, no, especially in October. No, no. Did I see a, there was this article that I, I read somewhere that said, after the month of October, pregnancies rise or something. No, really, no, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. But if that's it, then it's as interesting as that. And somebody was saying that, ah, why so soon? The October just started. Probably it's, people are dating it back to when maybe when people get back. We'll leave that aside. Yeah. So apart from the breastfeeding yes. and all that, what else? Yes. Then the lifestyle. So the okay. alcohol bit, the smoking mm. bit. Mm. Um, you check your weight because obesity too is linked right. um, with um, your risk of mm. getting it. Okay. Then um, I, I spoke about the fact that you should also try and conceive early okay. because early conception also helps, reduces the risk. Um, we saw a woman, it's just unfortunate, and from what she's telling me, every year she does a checkup. So she came, she's now 41, um, she came and, and we realized that she has a cancer. So she was trying to find out what exactly uh, made her get it because it's not in the family. And she's not someone who takes alcohol, she's like, she checks mm. her weight and all that. But um, asking further, I realized that she actually had a baby at 36. So as I said, mostly they are looking at below 35. So she was a little sad 
I mean, she's a little sad, which I understand here. It's not easy from what um, I got from her. She's trying to avoid some of these things and here she is. So, um, as you mentioned, the economic situation, but if you have the chance, you are comfortable, you think you are ready, we advise that as we try and also support her.